Hi guys, welcome to another video. Um, so in this week's video, I'm going to be actually answering questions that you guys and <laughs> yeah, you guys basically have asked me via my uh, YouTube comments and via my Instagram, my DMs. Um, so I've put a few video, a couple of videos up now of um, living in Australia and like tips that I would recommend that you sort of like follow or look into before you um, move out here. And there's been a fair amount of questions in the comments and I've also had a few people um, who have DM'd me and I've had a conversation with them um, answering any questions that I can as, as well as I can anyway. So in this video I'm basically working off the questions that I've been given in the comments and the questions that I've answered on, the, on my DMs. I thought if they were useful to individuals then it might be worth me answering the questions um, to a bigger audience or whatever. Um, so yeah, I've got a few questions. Um, I've narrowed it down to like four. My washing machine then was just going mental, sorry. Um, but yeah, so I've narrowed the questions down to about four general topics. Um, so I'm gonna be answering them for you today. So if you're interested in learning more about moving over to Australia and maybe getting some more questions answered, then keep watching. So organized, got a little notebook where I've written them down. Um, okay, so so the first question that I got, and this was a really common one, is how easy is it to get a job and apartment out here? Um, now, this is sort of like how long is a piece of string, you know, because it depends on the industry that you're in. Um, it depends, like, the experience that you've got. So it was a it's a little bit difficult for me to answer. But on the apartment side of things, it is um, it is easy to find yourself an apartment here. Um, I've lived in about four different apartments now. Um, I mentioned in my other video, um, Flatmates is a really good website to sign up to. Um, it's You can either say that you're looking for a flatmate, so if, if you've got an apartment and a spare room, um, or you can go on there if it's just yourself or yourself and your partner um, and you're looking for a spare room. And yeah, then you rent the room off the person who's posted the ad. That I think that's literally how I found every single apartment that I've moved into. You get a lot more for your money if you're living in the city, so like, um, around like Waterloo um, area in Sydney, if anyone knows where that is, uh, just give it a Google. Um, you get really, really nice modern apartments. Um, and then when you come out of the city into like the Eastern suburbs, so like Bondi where I live and um, like Bronte and Coogee, which is like all of the Eastern suburbs along the beachfront, um, the houses and apartments do get a little bit more rustic i'd say a little bit run down they're definitely not as modern like they're old old houses uh they're old buildings um but it's sort of like the price you pay for being near the beach um and yeah i love it so it's all up to preference city or beach <laughs> oh yeah you'll have no problem trying to find a, an apartment um finding a job like i said um i've mentioned this in my other video as well I think your best bet is to sign up to an agency when you get out here as they will know they'll be able to sort of like scrutinize your experience and be able to match you up for roles really well it's the same as any other country i think you know you're not gonna you're not gonna come out here like say you've got like a really good job in england or whatever you're not gonna come out here and suddenly struggle to find a job in your field um if you've got the experience back home then it will reflect really well on your cv and you should be fine um, I will say that once you get your foot in the door of sort of having a job in Australia on your CV, it does suddenly seem to open a lot more doors for you. I don't know why. I guess maybe they just know that you've had experience in Australia now and that, that you've worked well there. Uh, that's just like a random thing that I found. My next question that I got was based around money. So firstly, how much money do you need? Um, like how much money would I recommend you saving up before you come out here and also how much money you need to actually apply for the visa. Um, so I'll answer the visa one first. Uh, to apply for a working holiday visa in Australia, which is what I was on, uh, you need 5,000 AUD. So that's like 2,600 pounds. Um, you need that in your account. Um, I think it's so the government can see that you've got enough money to be able to support yourself and like, you're not gonna be like homeless and you know, like struggling to get back home how much money you need to come over with it really depends what your plans are if you're going to come over and do no traveling and get into work straight away then you probably only need to bring as much money as you would need to tie you over until you've got a job so maybe like a couple of thousand um but you know if you're going to go traveling first or if you're going to be doing 
like a, a few months of traveling, you're obviously gonna need a, need a lot more money. Personally, um, I'm fine with saying this, <laughs> I traveled for one month before I got here, uh, and then I started looking for work. I came, I saved up 7,000 um, pounds before I moved over here, and then I think I spent 5,000 on my month's travels. Um, I also did a week in Tokyo, so that is included in that. And then I had a buffer of £2,000 whilst I was finding a job, um, which I didn't really go into that much because um, I got a job quite quickly and then have managed to save from there. And just to add, that £5,000 um, that I spent, I wasn't really living it, I wasn't really living like on the cheap side of life. Like me and my partner were getting Airbnbs, we were going out for dinner, um, like that you can do it a lot more cheaper if you need to. Like hostels I know are so, so cheap, but we didn't want to stay in a hostel just because it, I don't know, it wasn't for us really. Um, so it can definitely be done on a lot less. But obviously the more money you save up, the better, because then you're going to be able to do like all the excursions that you want to do. Like you're not going to have to miss out on anything because you don't have enough money to do it. My third question, my legs are going numb, so I've had to switch positions. Uh, so the third question is about um, farm work. And I feel that maybe I confuse people in my other post because I sort of like glazed over it slightly. Um, so farm work is what you need to do if you're on a working holiday visa, if you're in your first year working holiday visa and you want to apply for your second year or your third year working holiday visa. You need to do three months agricultural work in a rural area of Australia. Um, this can be anywhere in Australia, but it does have to be classed as rural, like you can't do it in in a in a metropolitan place you can't do it in like a city and you have to do it for three months to get your second holiday visa and then you have to do it for six months to get your third holiday visa so if you want to stay here for the whole three years on a working holiday visa uh, just keep in mind that for nine months of that you will be away on a farm <laughs> i had a few people asking if there were any other options that they could do instead of doing the farm work and no, <laughs> not really. But the farm work doesn't actually always seem as bad as it sounds. Um, so you don't necessarily have to be an actual um, like fruit picker, like banana picking is like a really common thing. You don't necessarily have to be doing that. What you can do is some places you can actually get in contact with the farm and a lot of them will have like a bar attached or like a hosp uh, hospital, a hotel attached or um, something like that. And you could actually work as sort of like a cleaner in the hotel or like a maid at the hotel or a bar person or like, you know, like working in the bar and that still counts as your agricultural work. So it's all dependent on the farm itself. So you just need to get in contact and have that conversation with them. But that's like a little, I feel like that's a little, like a little easy way out if you don't actually do the manual stuff of farm work, you could just be a bartender for three months, which is like dreamy. <laughs> I was asked how easy it is to get farm work, which is not really something that I can speak on because I haven't done it. I didn't do it. I'm on the COVID visa, which you don't need farm work for. Anyone can apply for it. Um, and I think my experience of people applying for it was a lot worse because I was seeing it all happen during covid so people weren't allowed to sort of travel interstate which means like farmers couldn't get people up to work for them like it was all it was all a stressful time when the people that i came out with had to start applying for um farm work so i don't think i can help you on that one i'm sorry i'm not sure if it's easy to get i know there's loads of facebook groups that you can join that people post adverts in so i imagine if you join up to one of them and you just keep an eye on the farm work posted then like it'll be pretty fine finally the last thing that i'm gonna briefly discuss is sponsorship i've had a few people asking me how easy it is to get sponsored and like what that means like how long can you stay in the country for once you're sponsored um so sponsorship is something that the company that you work for does and um, they will pay the government um a large amount of money i think um and what that means is that you will then be on a contract with that company um, they can either choose to sponsor you for two years or four years. So some people do two and then they do two again, or some people just do the flat out four. And what it means is that you can only work for that company for the next two years. You can't change job because then you won't be sponsored and you won't have a valid visa. So when you get sponsored, you're then on a sponsored visa. Um, so you have to stay with that company. And you know, if you finish working with them and they don't want to renew your sponsorship, then you have 60 days to leave the country. Like you can't, you can't stay when you're not on a valid visa. Getting sponsored um, in roles, I think really depends on 
what industry you're in. Um, if you're a tradie, so if you're doing like um, building or like construction or something like that, you'll get sponsored very, very easily or like an electrician or something. Um, basically every single person I know who's a tradie is sponsored because it's just so easy. Like um, it's a really high in demand skill and the government and the company want to keep you here basically. Um, for more creative roles, um, my partner was looking for a marketing sponsorship for a while I think it's it's a bit more it's a bit more difficult I'm not sure why really maybe they have like they have the talent over here so they don't need it um but yeah so like for more creative sides like marketing events I think that's a bit more harder to get sponsored in um, and then also like healthcare social work uh working in care homes those three are really easy to get sponsored in as well um I think particularly due to COVID at the moment obviously but but prior to COVID as well it was like a really um in demand skill um, like being a nurse, etc. And yeah, so that's a that's one of the industries that's really easy to get sponsored in. Okay, so I've answered all like the preset questions that I had um, planned. So I hope that they've been helpful for you. Um, definitely go and check out my other two videos on like answering questions in Australia because I do think they'll help you if you've got like more questions. And I might have answered some in that, but I haven't in this. Um, but yeah, that is pretty much it for this week's video. I hope it's been helpful. Feel free to leave me any questions um, in the comments or like I said, feel free to send me a DM um, and I will, I'll definitely answer. So yeah, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye.